So I want you to live dangerously. Because danger means hope and opportunity, liberation. Living on the edge of a miracle every single day. That's why I love deliverance. Every day I live on the edge of a miracle. Every time a new face comes up on my computer screen, I'm about to witness a miracle in action. What's more wonderful than that? You can have your life of languor and malaise and frustration and tediousness, monotony, humdrum routines, frustration, all of it. You can have it. I want a life of constantly breaking free from the bondages of ancestors, predecessors, and detractors. Amen? You want to live that life? You want to live that life? All right. Time was a little tight after the first message this morning. It's a little less tight for me now. So we're going to pray for just a moment. I've really made some demons mad in this place. Oh, my. And with those bright lights, I can't see what I need to see. Some of you have got junk in your trunk. You got stuff you need to deal with. You have curses you need to break. You have demons you need to get rid of. Now I'm going to do something a little differently here. Normally in my seminars, I take time, I walk through the audiences, and I provoke the demons, like I'm doing now. I don't have time here because of the limitations of another service coming, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to be prayed for under these conditions. I'm going to ask a handful of people who feel like you might have some demonization for whatever reason to come for prayer. I do not want half this audience coming forward. That's not the point. We just want certain people. Number one, you've been really uncomfortable with my speaking. It's not that you necessarily philosophically disagree with what I'm saying. It's just you got a knot in your stomach. Maybe your heart's beating fast. You're feeling very uncomfortable. The more I kept speaking, the more agitated you got. That's the first thing. Second thing, you have some issues you may never have talked about or dealt with. Physical, sexual abuse, rape, incest, violence domestically in the home or in a marriage or in a relationship, things that are just eating away at your gut inside. So I want to ask you a question. And again, I'm not talking to the whole audience here tonight. I'm talking to a select group, and that is, what is the worst thing you've ever had happened to you in your life. You haven't had therapy and counseling, or if you did, it didn't help. You've never gone to a pastor or anybody to get prayers of deliverance to help resolve it. And maybe you've never told anybody. You are a candidate for deliverance. So if you're irritated by me and what I've said, or what's been going on here. If you've got some things in your life that have been tearing you apart and perhaps exhibiting that in all kinds of aberrant behavior, alcohol and drug issues, broken relationships constantly, anger and rage that's out of control, I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes talking with you and praying with you. So I'm going to ask you in a minute to get out of your seat and come down here. 
I am not asking for a mass deliverance prayer. We don't have time for that. I'm not really into that right now. I want to focus on a handful of people for whom this morning was meant. So if there's some very deep pain in your life that hasn't been totally resolved, if you haven't had the proper kind of help, if there's anger, hurt, and frustration eating away at you, if you've suffered some trauma that you feel like has never completely been healed, you're the person I want to pray for. I want you to come down here right now and just stand and face me. All right, just come and stand here. Come closer. Just leave me a little room to get in front of you here. Okay, why don't you look at me? I don't recognize you without your mask, with the mask on. Are you who I think you are? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> this lady I've ministered to, Pastor, why don't you meet this? I, I've ministered to her by virtual. I've ministered to her in person very traumatic life. She has moved up here to Pasco because she learned about you through me and wants to be part of what you guys are doing up here and get healing. Keep your head up. Look at me. Do you mind telling me what kind of pain you got in your life? I can't help you if you don't tell me. And if it's too private, then you'll have to find another way. But if I can help you right now, you just need to tell me what it is. Please open your eyes and look at me. What is it? Can I have the mic a hair louder, please, if they speak lowly? Go ahead. Oh, I was sexually abused when I was a kid. How old? How old? Four. Four. Open your eyes and look at me. I want you to stop what you're doing right now. Look at me. What you're doing, it's not a rebuke. It's just you're, you're giving in to the shame. If you're sexually abused at the age of four, you have nothing to be ashamed of. Okay? You're a victim. Okay? A victim. So we need to break this off of you, All right? Um, Tony, I don't know if he needs you out there or not, but you can come over here and give me a hand, please. Next question. Look at me. Somebody you know or didn't know? It was a family member. You what? It was an uncle. What? Uncle. So it's a bloodline member. Okay. I'll work with this one. Thanks. That's okay. I just want that back so I can see your eyes. Give me some. Um, I need one other person to assist me. Pastor, if you could send somebody to assist me from your team here real quickly. I need a man who could assist me. Huh? Well, are you from the church here? Hold my oil. Open it up for me when I need it. Thank you very much. Look at me. What's your first name? Sheila. Huh? Sheila. Sheena? Sheila. Spell it. S-H-E-I-L-A. Sheila. I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open and look at me. I want you to say to me, what happened to me at four is not my fault. <laughs> Say, eyes open, eyes open. So I want eye contact. Thank you. What happened to me is not my fault. 
what happened to me was not my fault. Okay. okay, I don't want you to hyperventilate here, but I understand if you've never told anybody about this, if you've never processed this, how old are you? 28. Oh, how tragic you had to go so long. The reason I want eye contact is I, I, want, I want to dispel the shame and the fear and every negative emotion associated with this, all right? I want you to say, I go back through my ancestors. I go back through my ancestors. <laughs> I go back through my ancestors. To the beginning of this evil. To the beginning of this evil. The first woman in my bloodline. <laughs> the first woman in my bloodline. To suffer abuse. To suffer abuse. Rape and incest. <laughs> Rape and incest. And I break that curse. <laughs> break that. Say clearly, firmly, I break that curse. I break that curse. I'm going to need another man over here to help me, please, from the, from the church. Okay, stand right here. Right here. Look at me, look at me. So I will not live in this shame any longer. <laughs> I will not live in this shame any longer. I will be a woman of God. I will be a woman of God. The soul tie created with that uncle. The soul tie created with that uncle. When he abused me. When he abused I cut off. He cut off. I take the sword of the spirit and I cut it off right now. Every demon passed on to me by him. Every demon passed on to me by him. Has to leave me. Has to leave me. <laughs> According to Hebrews 4.12, by the sword of the spirit, I divide soul and spirit. I need another man over here on my left side. Here, just stand here. Look at me, Jezebel. Come on, Jezebel, look at me. You've been in hiding this woman for 23 years. <laughs> Get your eyes open, look at me, Jezebel. 23 years. Get your eyes open and look at me, Jezebel. I command it by the blood of Christ. You, you, you not have this woman anymore. Do you understand me? Look at me, Jezebel. Look at me. I'm going to take the sword of the Spirit and put it right through you and give you a taste of God's judgment. Now let this thing come up. Let it come up and look at me. Let this thing defy me. I want to know, Jezebel, where did this start? Come on, Jezebel, you've got her in a state of trauma. Where did it start? Get your eyes open to look at me, Jezebel. Where did it start? Anytime there's sexual abuse of a child, it's always the spirit of Jezebel to start with. Look at me. How many generations ago did this start, Jezebel? Huh? How many? Say whatever is in your mind, Sheila. Say it. Just whatever is in your mind, say it. <laughs> oh, we're going to laugh now, Jezebel. <laughs> You're so proud of what you've done all these years, all these generations. How many women have been raped and incested and tormented, huh? <laughs> many, Jezebel? <laughs> Jezebel, look at me. Look at me, Jezebel. Get your eyes open. I asked a question. How many generations does this go back? Answer me. Is that an eight? Thirteen? Thir Look at me, Jezebel. Well, Thirteen? Is that right? Confirm it. Thirteen? Loved every minute, didn't you? Eyes open, Jezebel. Look at the man of God. What happened 13 generations ago? What happened 13 generations ago? What was it? Answer me. I command you by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You tell me what happened 13 generations ago. Huh? I raped her. What? 
rape. So for all these hundreds of years, you've been hanging around raping, molesting, and incesting women. Look, Jezebel, it's over. Eyes open, Jezebel, look at me. And we're not going to solve this whole problem today, Jezebel, but if we get rid of you, this woman's going to be in a position to heal. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Say, I, Jezebel. <laughs> Say it. I, Jezebel. No, say it clearly. I, I Jezebel. Jezebel. Get your eyes open and look at me. What are you afraid of? I know what you're afraid of. <laughs> say, lift this curse. Lift <laughs> this curse. Of 13 generations. Of 13 generations. Of child <laughs> rape. Say, so lift this curse. It's curse. On future generations. On future generations. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Hold on to her. Hold on to her. No, no. Get, get, get this off. Get this off. Hold on to her. Look at me. Lift it, Jezebel. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Well, I'm getting tired of asking you to get your eyes open and look at me, Jezebel. Say, I have no right. So I have no right, I have no right. to this woman of God. <laughs> to this woman of God. I am judged by Christ. I am judged by Christ. You're such a whiner today, Jezebel. Such a whiner. I'm used to Jezebel's who are a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> What's your problem? She doesn't want you? Huh? Say, I, Jezebel. I, Jezebel. With my kingdom of evil. <laughs> my kingdom of evil. All lust and perversion. All lust and perversion. Hold this. <laughs> now receive. Now receive. The judgment of Christ. The judgment of Christ. <laughs> and with this kingdom, this kingdom we all we all go go now <laughs> say now now to <laughs> you folks get ready to help me out and tell this thing where to go in a minute okay say to to the <laughs> pit <laughs> come out of her in the name of Christ go 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 well, come on act like you mean it go go come out of her <laughs> Go, Jezebel. No. Get out. You can't get me out. Go. <laughs> Go. 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 No. Go. Go completely. Come on. Come on. Come on completely. Go. 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 The peace of God, the presence of Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit being upon you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and fill this area where this evil was.